words cannot express the joy of not having to pattern match when you pin because the sleeves are not going to match perfectly and that is fine. It's so exciting. <laughs> I feel like I'm working so fast. <laughs> Hello friends, and welcome back to the Wishing Gown Project. If you're not sure what's going on, feel free to pause here and go back to part one of this series to catch up. We're going to just jump right back in with assembling and hemming sleeves. Well, the time has come to figure out doing the drapery on the skirt which I'm going to have to figure out how it's going to go together because I'm not making this dress all in one piece like the stage costume is. Uh, my best thought is to uh, make it an overlapping waistband that will just go over this skirt. Um, gotta figure out how to do waterfall drapery now, I guess, <laughs> and hope that I have enough fabric and enough ribbon and all that, so... Yeah, I'll try that now, because that's the last thing I have to pattern. <laughs> to start patterning, I drew out a shape that was half the width that I wanted and long enough to go over the bustle with a small amount of train. I sketched out the rough shape of the drapery on this as well, mostly eyeballing it, but trying to keep the spacing between lines fairly even. Alright, so I fussed with this pattern a little bit more. I hope you can see the lines on here. Um, I think I'm pretty happy with this. This will be about half of the drapery in the back. So the next step is to take... This is what it's going to look like finished and um, unfold it, so to speak. So spread the pattern out to get my full piece. And then we'll pattern the other couple pieces, and then we'll go back to cutting fabric. To get my full pattern piece, I traced the outline of my template, and then continued tracing copies, cutting off one line's worth of paper from the template to complete the curve of the bottom edge. I continued to do this until I traced the final piece off of the template. Alright, so as you can see, here's our kind of funky shape that we get from copying that all out. I'm going to go through and smooth off all these little bumps along the edge, smooth off the top edge, um, and then see how I'm going to fit this onto the fabric. But that's more or less uh, how this is going to go. So this also gives me nice fold lines to know where to fold my fabric. Uh, yeah. Oh goodness, the back drapery piece is so big, it doesn't fit on my extra wide fabric. <laughs> uh, so what we're probably gonna have to do is um, cut it here and then cut another little triangle just to make up this little bit that won't fit and piece it together. Uh, then we're going to cut out our other pieces and hopefully it all fits together without too much empty space between pieces. <laughs> I neglected to film patterning the apron and pannier pieces, but I draped these on the dress form and then cut them together with the waterfall pieces. Also, can confirm, cutting fabric on the floor is instantly improved with a comfy onesie. Okay, so here is how all those waterfall pieces look laid out. So as you can see, I've got the two little pieces at the bottom uh, that I need to stitch in, and then I can do this center back seam. And then it is ribbon time. And holy cow, this thing is so big, I'm, um, <laughs> I'm standing on a chair and I still can't get the whole thing in the frame. Oh boy. 
Uh, also, after all that pattern matching on the bodice, I decided to make this piece easy on myself, so I used my dotted line to line up pieces so that my seam is here where it's just plain blue and there is nothing to match. And that makes me so happy. Uh, and I did make sure to match up this little pattern, but I don't have to match dotted lines or flowers or anything on my seam. Hooray! <laughs> Here's that piecing again, just to show you from the inside um, how all of this is going together. And here is what it looks like right side up. Makes a nice, pretty V, and you can barely see where I had to piece it. And that should be my last piece of pattern matching! Ah! So now that I have all of my overskirt pieces cut and hemmed where needed, I'm going to go around and sew all of that ribbon around. I think it'll be a lot faster if I do a row of each color ribbon on all of the pieces around and around and around rather than continuously changing my thread color. So. I'm just gonna be a little ribbon sewing factory for the next I don't know how long. <laughs> I started stitching with the navy ribbon, alternating rows with the light blue ribbon. I did five rows total on the waterfall and apron ruffle, and three rows on the panniers and sleeve ruffles. I also only stitched on one side of the ribbon, which seemed to be plenty to keep it in place and saved me a lot of time and thread. On the sleeve ruffles, I also finished the top edges with another row of ribbon. screwed up my pleat math. If I want to do box pleats, it should be three times what your finished length should be, not two times. So I need to redo my ruffles because I can't do math and I'm a little grumpy about it. That's gonna be a tomorrow project because it is nine o'clock at night and I'm done. <laughs> I just eyeballed all of my pleats and checked my final measurements before stitching. I pinned each pleat top and bottom, stitched along the top, and then hard pressed all of the pleats carefully with the iron.
Um, so here's what I did to pattern the velvet over part of the cuff. Uh, I just pinned my pleated ruffle onto the end of my sleeve, and I just kept messing around with paper shapes until I was happy with it. It looks like in the photos you can see the top edge of the pleats above, and then just a little bit above the ribbon on the bottom. And I had to curve it a little bit to make it go around the bottom of the sleeve nicely, but I'm ready to cut this out in velvet, and I'll do the same thing with it as I did with the collar. I also cut the lace for the sleeve ruffles, shaping them so that the ruffle will be shorter in the front and longer in the back. This shaping makes the ruffle look more elegant than a straight line across, and also matches the original dress design. I prepped these by gathering onto a band of lace that matches the sleeve hem measurement and stitching two ruffles to each band. So this is pretty much what you end up with. Uh, my ruffle is all gathered and ready to go. And when I want to put it in the sleeve, I can just cross stitch this little bit of lace in, which will keep it all nice and neat. You won't see any of these little ends. And we're ready to put the sleeves together at last. Okay, here's all my sleeve pieces. We have sleeves, we have ruffles, we have pleated ruffles, and we have our velvet uh, cuffs. So I'm going to put in the lace ruffles first so that it's easier to get to, because that's the bottom layer, and then work my way out to those, and then I'll put the little flowers on at the end uh, once I can decide where they want to go. I hand stitched each sleeve element in place, as it would be pretty impossible to get any of this under the sewing machine. After cross stitching in the lace ruffles, I then sewed on the remaining pieces with small tack stitches. Sleeves are mostly done, hooray! They need just um, a few more little embellishments, but I'm going to get them into the bodice to make sure that we're still moving along. Um, but I just love the shaping of these where I can just see, like, there's nothing in here. You can see the shape of the arm and how elegant the uh, elongation in the back is. It just looks so 
lovely and I'm really excited to get these in and then I can put the collar on and then the bodice is mostly done which is really exciting because I'm at exactly two weeks until I need to wear this so ah <laughs> I carefully pinned the collar in place on the form and then slip stitched it to the bodice from the inside of the dress. Next I did the same process that I did with the pleated sleeve ruffles just for the apron ruffle. This then got pinned and sewn onto the bottom of the apron by machine. The next step was the pleats in the apron and panniers, which I pinned in place the way I had draped them and then adjusted them on the form before stitching them in place. With all the ribbon finished and the lining cut and stitched, I bagged out the waterfall piece with the lining and neatly pressed all edges. To set the folds in the waterfall drapery, I laid my paper pattern over the fabric and folded them together along the fold lines on the paper. I then steamed each fold with the iron while the paper stayed in place, being very careful not to press each fold totally flat so I didn't end up with obvious ironing lines along the edges. After steaming, I gently tugged out the paper and did the other side to match. Using the pattern like this helped a lot to keep the drapery folded exactly the way I wanted it while setting the folds with the iron. And that will be it for part three, as this is such a long project. Apologies again for this taking so long to get put up. The final part on this gown will be coming up, so stay tuned.